Good morning, everyone. Uh, today's Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of uh, Dwayne Higgins. So uh, do remember Dwayne in your prayers, if you will, today. And we also have today uh, the celebration of St. Alphonsus Liguri. And I just have to change my book over for the entrance antiphon. He is the uh, founder of the Redemptorists uh, during the 1800s. A very interesting uh, man if you ever have an opportunity to read his history. There we go. And together let us say, I will look after my sheep, says the Lord, and I will appoint a shepherd to pasture them, and I, the Lord, will be their God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who constantly raise up in your church new examples of virtue, grant that we may follow so closely in the footsteps of the Bishop St. Alphonsus and his zeal for souls as to attain the same rewards that are his in heaven through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The priests and the prophets uh, said uh, to the princes and to all the peoples, this man deserves death. He has prophesied against the city, as you have heard with uh, your own ears. Jeremiah gave his answer to the princes and all the people. It was the Lord who sent me to prophesy against this house and city, all that, uh, all that you have heard. Now, therefore, reform your ways and your deeds. Listen to the voice of the Lord your God, so that the Lord will repent of the evil which, uh, which he threatens you. As for me, I am in your hands. Do with me what you think good or and right. But mark well, if you put me to death, it is innocent blood you bring up on yourselves and on this city and its citizens. For in truth, it was the Lord who sent me to you to speak all these things for you to hear. Thereupon the princes and all the people said to the priests and the prophets, this man does not deserve death. It is in the name of the Lord our God that he speaks to us. So Achim, son of Shaphan, uh, uh, protected uh, Jeremiah so that he was not handed over to the people uh, to be put to death. The word of the Lord. The Lord in, uh, Lord, in your great love, answer me. Rescue me out of the mire, may I not sink. May I be rescued from my foes and from the watery depths. Let not the flood waters overwhelm me, nor the abyss swallow me up, nor the pit close its mouth over me. But I am afflicted in pain. Let your uh, uh, saving help, O oh God, protect me i will praise the name of the of god in song i will glorify him with thanksgiving see you uh, see you lowly ones and be glad you who seek god may your heart re parts revive for the lord hears the poor and he uh, and his own who are in the uh, bonds he spurns not Alleluia, 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 
Alleluia. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Herod, the tetrarch, heard of the reputation of Jesus and said to his servants, This man is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty works, uh, mighty powers are at work in him. Now Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. For John had said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Although he wanted to kill him, he feared the people, for they regarded him as a prophet. But at a birthday celebration of Herod, the daughter of Herodias performed a dance before the guests and delighted Herod in so much that he swore to give her whatever she might ask for. Prompted by her mother, she said, give me, the, uh, give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests who were present, he ordered that it be given and that he had John uh, beheaded in the prison. He, his head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl. He took it to her mother. His disciples came and took away the corpse and buried him, and they went and told Jesus the gospel of the Lord. I love the uh, drama that uh, uh, the church sets up in its liturgy because now we are uh, seeing something that is going to be uh, uh, talked about tomorrow at, at Sunday's Mass. And those who do participate in the, in the uh, daily Mass are able to go along and feel this drama and to be able to come to a, even a greater understanding, a greater depths of, of the Sunday Gospel. We have here today, uh, especially in the first reading, an example of, again, how the church in its entire history has always been Political. I mean, I don't know how many times I hear people say, oh, you know, church shouldn't get in politics and, oh, there shouldn't be said anything in church that is political. But of course, you sit there and say, well, uh, which group do you belong to? Go, go back to the Old Testament. Who, who are the ones who kept on saying over and over again, oh, you shouldn't be preaching politics? And of course, uh, you will find yourself on the opposite end of God, the opposite end of the church. Because the church has a responsibility that when society is going astray, that it's still that's the one you, you want to think of the, the balance that, that comes in, the check and balance method of saying, are you sure you're following good philosophy? Are you following good theology? And man more works on passion than he does reason. We all let our passions control us. Now, that would be a relatively okay if we were in the Garden of Eden, where we were in our original innocence, where reason was able to inform passion, and passion conformed itself to reason. But ever since the fall of man, it's been the opposite, where the passions control reason instead of the other way around. And if you need any proof of it, I just simply in the 21st century ask you to look at what's going on in Portland and Seattle. You talk about passion ruling reason. And it's unreasonable. And, and this is why the church does have to come out in its good theology, in its good philosophy, and, and to remind us about the gospel of life. And what a beautiful example of, again, how the gospel of life is demonstrated so beautifully in today's gospel as well. Because here John, again, is always trying to preach, get on the right path. And of course, what does evil do? It wants to kill. It wants to destroy. It wants to live in in a society of darkness. And yet darkness cannot overcome uh, the light, the, the light of the gospel, the light in the gospel of life. And so again, you're, you're gonna notice today uh, how this, this uh, little episode, these episodes have been here in the gospel are gonna come to fruition and come to completion in tomorrow's uh, uh, gospel at Sunday mass. Just a brief word about uh, St. Alphonsus Liguori. Now, he's a, another man, a bishop, who uh, was also, during the 1800s, uh, confronting uh, uh, the uh, enlightened people, all the enlightened politicians, the enlightened world, who were looking about the church at his time. Jeez, imagine that. A 
making changes in the world uh, as being out of date. Oh, so medieval, and we're in the 18th century. We we uh, uh, have have discovered all these uh, different things, and and our our God is reason. Our God is uh, what we come up with. Our God is humanity and human ways. And of course, then Alphonsus realized that something had to be done to to be able to uh, quell uh, quell this, this idea. So. He began writing, and with his writings, he also started getting a, a following of, of men. And of course, uh, he was able then to set up an established uh, congregation of redemptorists, these individuals who would go out to, as their mission, to bring the gospel and to redeem the world. So if you will today, let us remember to pray for those that are called to religious life, especially the redemptorists, and through the intercession of uh, St. Alphonsus Liguria, who is in heaven uh, celebrating this this day of uh, his uh, his I, if I remember say I think it was he died on August first and was born in heaven. Let us now join ourselves with him in our petitions. Please stand. So Heavenly Father, we again give you thanks for this opportunity to come to know you better, and we in this day come and give you worship and praise. Heavenly Father, hear our petitions as we turn to you and pray for those who are being called to religious life, that they set aside the noises of this world and hear your call. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, God. And Heavenly Father, not only may they hear their call, but may they act on that call and uh, do your will in, in the vocation that you have chosen for them, a perfect vocation. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, God. Now, Heavenly Father, we also pray for the Redemptress and all those who who are uh, exercise uh, uh, this this uh, great uh, vocation uh, in the world? We also remember all those who served our church here at St. Wilfrid's on its hundredth anniversary. We remember the Eudists and the Presentation Sisters, the Franciscans. Heavenly Father, we give you praise for their example of life, giving all up for you. Heavenly Father, may you bless them as they mission in the world to bring about your gospel of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Now, Heavenly Father, we also turn to you during this time of chaos in our world. Also pray for the leaders of our church. We pray for Pope Francis and Bishop Donald, that Holy Spirit guide them as they too continue to bring about here, uh, in the world your kingdom as it is in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord and now, Heavenly Father, we also pray for our world leaders. Uh, in this day, we particularly want to pray for those individuals who identify themselves as Catholic and have such a horrible, horrible voting record, giving such scandal to the world by, by what they do and, and say, and contrary to the teachings of the church. Heavenly Father, so we pray for legislators, we pray for politicians, we pray for anybody that needs your enlightenment, that, that as they are to protect the common good, that they too will also remember to be servants to servants and serve your common good according to your will well. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, Saturdays are in the United States are marked for the day the, of where the abortion industry is in its, uh, at its highest point, in its peak. Heavenly Father, through the intercession of San Alphonsus, through the intercession of Mary, Mother of God, come to those who are contemplating uh, the sin of abortion. Come and whisper in their ear to reject this culture of death and, and embrace the gospel of life and give life a chance. We pray to the Lord. Lord yeah, Heavenly Father, we also pray for those individuals who are sick amongst us. Uh, we in particular remember all those that, that are um, going through any procedures or soon to go through procedures or operations and having the angst of, of the difficulties that are being presented during this coronavirus. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit to be with these individuals, to be with the family as they suffer along with them, that they will be given a quick healing and also uh, be able to return soon to your altar of praise with us. We pray to the Lord. Lord yeah, okay. Now, Heavenly Father, all the blessings that you give us, we now turn to you on this special day and through the intercession of St. Alphonsus, one who worked so hard. We pray for their farmers and ranchers in particular that they be kept safe in the fields as they work the heavy equipment and the animals. And they may also be blessed by you with the weather necessary to not only have a successful but a profitable and abundant harvest as they 
literally feed the world by the work of their hands. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear now, Heavenly Father, we present you all those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, as we remember uh, uh, Dwayne Higgins in particular, but for all of our holy dead, may they share the, the uh, wondrous uh, uh, gift of eternal life and eternal peace with the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Now we come to you with those petitions that we hold dearest to our own hearts, knowing you hear us when we call out to you. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our God, our Father, again, it is a great privilege to be here to give you praise and worship, worship that was instituted by you and our cooperation to be here and, and return this worship that is rightly yours now we turn to you humbly with our own petitions as we heard in today's psalm, realizing that it is the poor in spirit that are rewarded and given your ear. Now humbly we present these petitions to you through our mediator, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our eldest brother, who we know lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit as one God forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, come our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to enkindle our hearts with the celestial fire of your spirit, just as you granted that St. Alphonsus should celebrate these mysteries and by them offer himself to you as a holy sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on, uh, for as on the festival of St. Alphonsus Liguri, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with all, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. And we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Again, if you look in your word among us, or you're living with Christ, let us say together the communion antiphon as we honor St. Alphonsus Liguri today. It was not you who chose me, says the Lord, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, 
fruit that will last. And again, in your charity today, do remember, if you will, to pray for Dwayne Higgins, the repose of his soul coming off of this Mass. And let us pray. O oh God, who gave us St. Alphonsus to be a faithful steward and preacher of this great mystery, grant that your faithful may receive it often and, re uh, and may receive it often and receiving it, praise you without end through Christ our Lord. And as the prayer said, uh, we offer, uh, we referred to it twice now in the uh, prayers today. If you ever have an opportunity, do uh, pick up the writings of St. Alphonsus. He's a very easy read. It really is. The only problem is he never wrote books like this thick, too. But 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 he is a very easy read and, and really a, an amazing um, uh, author in terms of uh, 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 the direction he goes, the passion that he has for Our Lady, and the passion he has for the Eucharist, and the passion he has for, for Jesus. And of course, as I said in last yesterday's uh, homily, the word passion in its real sense, and it was a deep emotion, a deep uh, love he had for, for the church and, and for uh, uh, Jesus, the Eucharist, and Mary. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended.